Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Vietnam War. I am Mike B, and today, after not having made a video for this series in quite some time, I am back with a really cool topic. I was just thinking about this a few weeks ago and um, have been kind of doing a lot of research and trying to find as much as I can with photographs and accounts and everything of helmets that were used by the North Vietnamese Army, the People's Army of Vietnam, the NLF, um, you name it. Anybody that was basically fighting for the North Vietnamese and the communist um, movement and that was fighting against the South Vietnamese, Australian and United, United States forces. So it was kind of like their weaponry where they used whatever they could get their hands on and they were supported by Eastern Bloc countries from Europe and um, the Soviet Union and stuff and to a lesser extent China. But uh, we'll get into that towards the end of the video because it's just worth a little bit of a mention but not too much. Um, anyway, so I'm going to start with kind of the most common helmets you're going to see them wearing. Now, before we get into that, I'm going to just give you a brief history. Now, you see the North Vietnamese Army and a lot of uh, the Viet Cong and everything they were called were utilizing pith helmets or um, straw bamboo hats or, you know, hats or helmets. They weren't really using ballistic helmets because they were hard to come by. They were expensive. And so from what I've researched, most of these helmets were actually going to have been issued and used around the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Of course, there's exceptions to everything, but on the Ho Chi Minh Trail, the United States and um, allies bombed that almost daily for several years, and it was a very dangerous place to be for those forces. So they would issue, um, they actually had body armor that they started wearing for a brief period. That stuff's really rare, but part of their body armor was a steel helmet. And the most common one I've seen around the Ho Chi Minh Trail is this, the East German M1956. Now, this is a 5676, so I don't actually... I, haven't found a regular like an uh, actual 1956 helmet I don't think ever for sale and if I did I probably couldn't afford it at the time but the shell is basically the same except for the rivets the design is the chin straps the same the liner on the 1956 is going to be the German M31 style liner it's not going to be this um, thing but check out all these pictures uh, it's just picture after picture of um, North Vietnamese army and uh, their forces wearing these helmets there's large groups of soldiers wearing these helmets and it was a very iconic helmet. This is this helmet's been used all over the world, but it's kind of became really prolific during the Vietnam War. Because uh, East Germany didn't really experience combat on a large scale ever. So like, I think they, A, had a surplus of these, and B, wanted to see how they worked out in the field. And I, I can't really, I don't really have a lot of firsthand accounts of Vietnamese soldiers that wore these and if they liked them or not. Uh, some guys you see wearing these, like in these pictures, you can just, probably already saw it uh the, a couple of these guys do not know how to wear those helmets at all and they're kind of wonky and stuff and the other ones it seems like they know how to wear it so i wonder how it actually worked anyway this is going to be probably the most common um actually it's tied with the next one that i'll show you so yeah the east german m56 is going to be probably the most common steel helmet used by these forces next we've got the czech m1952 i know everybody calls it the 1953 but I received a large batch of these several years ago, and they've all since sold. And I saw several that were dated 1952, so I'm going to be calling it the 1952. It's the same thing as a uh, Model 53, I guess, but I just call it something a little bit different based on personal experience. Um, so anyway, the Czech Model 1952 helmet is probably as common, or maybe just a little bit less, commonly seen on the battlefields of Vietnam as the East German M56. Now... The interesting thing about this one is they they sent, I think, tens of thousands of these as aid throughout the years. And they're always mistaken by um, U.S. service members and in pictures as a Soviet SSH-40. Well, or it's SSH-39 or SSH-60, which is more believable. So, there's a um, big difference between, well, there's, I'm sorry, there's little differences between the Czech M1952 and the ssh 40 or 39. One is the rivet placement. So you've got the rivet up there and on the 39 and 40 and 60, the Soviet ones, you're going to have the rivet placement there. On other helmets too, they're different and we'll get into that. But the telltale way to figure out that this is not an SSH 39, I'll just say SSH series. So it's those three, like I said, the 39, 40 and um, 60 is because the chin strap has got that big buckle on there on the 39 and 40 on the SSH 39 and 40, it's going to be a canvas chin strap. And uh, yeah, the rivet placement. Now, these are also a little bit bigger and differently shaped, but it's hard to tell in photographs. The best way is the uh, rivet placement and the actual buckle on the chin strap. It's very square, and usually you're going to have this hanging out like that. So 
These are going to be the mobs, sec probably the second, I'll say the most or second most commonly seen steel helmet used by these forces. And uh, yeah, it, it's, we'll get into some pictures. You can see on these pictures that I've been showing you that um, you're like, okay, yeah, that looks different. And I'll show you uh, towards the end, a picture of a hodgepodge of the SSH style helmets like this, you know, with the swooped little ear protection and stuff. And then you can see how difficult it is to actually identify what model this is. But if you have a keen eye, You'll, you'll be able to tell it it's this, and it's all it's usually commonly mistaken for a Soviet helmet, but it's technically Czechoslovakian. All right, we'll move on. So speaking of the SSH series, um, all three variants can be seen being used by these forces as well. You got the SSH-39, which is this, with a uh, European, basically like a German M31 style liner. Then they went to the three-pad system with the SSH-40, which is in front of you. Both of these aforementioned models have the canvas chin strap. And the SSH-60 was retrofitted with the... Um, kind of four pad SH 68 style liner, but it was still using the 40 shells and it had a leather chin strap, I believe. I think some of them still retain the canvas, so kind of a crap shoot. So like I said, if you can see the rivet placement on here is a lot lower than on the M52 helmet. And the profile is slightly more different. Uh, the 52 is more blocky, it's, it's, it sits higher. It's not as like round, I don't think. It could be just my opinion. They're very similar, obviously the Czech M52 was designed off of this design. But they are, they are different. Now, there were a lot of these sent as aid, but it's not as many as the Czech M52. So that's why a lot of these um, helmets that are, you know, they say, oh, a Soviet helmet found in Vietnam, it's actually going to be the Czech one. However, there were quite a few of the 39s, 40s, and 60s sent from the Soviet Union to uh, help as aid. So these were also there. You can see, um, and, I mean, I'll show you at the end. You can see these pictures and stuff. Just remember the rivet placement and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll move on really quick. So here we've got one. This is where it starts getting really hard to find pictures of these particular models. But I do know that these were sent as aid and used not in as large numbers as the previous three helmets, which are going to probably be the most commonly encountered. But um, this is a Hungarian M1950. This is actually a 1950-70, I call it, because it was up upgraded with that crappy shiny paint. Uh, Hungarian M50s that were not updated are really hard to find, but also the rivet placement tells you that it's a 1950. They're very um, distinct in their um, their shape and their placement on the shell. And the shell itself is a little bit different. Um, God, it's stupid paint. You can see the visor is pretty small, and it's a different kind of flare, and it sits a little bit farther back than an SSH-40 does, or um, check M52. So yeah, I've seen these in photos. It's hard. I tried. I scoured for a couple weeks looking for photos for you guys. Um, but a lot of these are, are just photos that I've seen in the past. And then, you know, three computers later and two crash hard drives later. I kind of lost a bunch of those pictures and it's not as easy. Um, but anyway, that's why I don't have pictures of this one per se. But these were sent as aid from Hungary. And the original 1950 helmets are going to have a leather chin strap. But they're going to have that three pad cloth liner. If you haven't seen that. So yeah, these were also sent as aid. So sort of the last SSH style uh, steel helmet or SSH influenced helmet I've seen in photographs, and I'll put I'll put the one I've been talking about up here in a minute is the Polish WZ50 steel helmet. So like the Hungarian M1950, it's got a leather chin strap, but the if you see on this, if you remember, the flare sits a little bit differently than it does on the SSH-40. It's kind of a combination of the SSH-40 and the WZ-31. It's a very unique helmet if you don't know what these are. And uh, yeah, so these, Poland sent these to a lot of countries during the 20th century, the Cold War specifically as aid. And these were seen in small numbers. So check this picture out. This is a really neat photograph. So you've got um, the WZ-50, this guy, the SSH-40 and the Czech M52 all in the same photograph, and they all look generally the same unless you look for close details. So these were sent in smaller numbers too because Poland was actively using these and until they came out with the WZ-67, and then they sent a lot of these over after that helmet, that new helmet was introduced. But these were still being actively used. So were the other helmets, but they made more of them, I guess. I don't know the exact reasoning um, or if they were sending these to other countries or whatnot, but yeah, so that's the story on that. All right, we'll move on to a couple more that were fairly uncommon, but still worth mentioning. Next up was a helmet that was actually used by both North Vietnamese and some Army of the Republic of Vietnam or South Vietnamese forces. Oddly enough, it's the French Model 1951. So these were just left over from French troops or they were captured in combat during the Indochina War of the 1950s. 
Um, so these were definitely used quite frequently, especially in the very early days. And when the, the Eastern Bloc countries and stuff like the ones we just talked about started supplying, these things became less popular because there was a finite amount and they couldn't keep up a constant supply. So whatever was used was used or it was lost or destroyed. Uh, if you haven't seen my helmet ballistic test on this guy, it didn't really do that well. So it probably lost popularity because of something like that. But anyway, yeah, the French 1951 was used. There's some pictures where you can see um, South Vietnamese soldiers and North Vietnamese and Viet Cong soldiers wearing these very early on specifically. Um, yeah, so we've got that. We'll move on. Also used very early on, actually fighting the French, uh, but these were still seen and captured very early on with the U.S. involvement in the early 60s and even the mid-60s. You see these once in a while is the Japanese Type 90 steel helmet. So the reason they ended up in Vietnam or Indochina, if you will, was when the Viet Minh were, or who would become the Viet Minh were kind of fighting the Japanese in the Second World War, they would capture these. And then after the Japanese were defeated, they used these as their steel helmet for the Viet Minh for a while because that's all they had. And um, they were really popular in the 19, late 1940s and early 1950s. And definitely you're gonna see these being used as long as possible by North Vietnamese forces, Viet Cong and um, NLF, stuff like that. So yeah, although very uncommon, we're, we're kind of getting to the point where it's like, yeah, well this, you know, you might see one or two pictures. It was definitely still on the battlefield during the Vietnam War with the US and Australian and South Vietnamese forces involved. And this is the last one that I'm gonna mention that I said was almost not even worth mentioning because it's so uncommon and very rarely seen but they did exist, um, is the German Stahlhelm, any, any model, 1935. Um, these were the ones that were sent to or bought by China during their revolution and during World War II. They kind of wore something like this and thereafter. China did send a very small amount of these as aid to um, North Vietnam, but they were using them themselves, so it was kind of difficult to um, keep up that supply. But So these are this is like the honorable mention, basically, but I didn't want to spend too much time on it. So... We'll end the video looking at a nice, you know, M42 Stahlhelm. Um, thank you for watching, everybody. If you got any questions, I'll try to answer them. This is what I've noticed over the years that the Vietnamese forces, or North Vietnamese forces, we'll just say, were wearing as steel helmets. And most of the time, they're going to be wearing hats or pith helmets. But when you do see them wearing steel helmets, there's going to be a Maj Podge or a hodgepodge, just like every other thing they use, like gear, weapons, and all that stuff. It's whatever they could beg, borrow, or steal to get. And, um, yeah, so... Hope you learned something. Um, I'm pretty sure I covered all the ones that would have been commonly seen. There might be some exceptions, but this is, I mean, the first two are going to be the ones that you're going to see the most. So the M52 and the M56. But yeah, anyway, thank you for watching. It's good to be back on the series. I'll hopefully have some more Vietnam videos coming out, especially when it gets nice and cold up here in the winter and I got nothing better to do but sit in here and do research and make little videos. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, if you want to help support the channel financially to make cool videos, cool content like ballistic tests, these kind of videos with all the different helmets that cost money and all that stuff, you could do so by becoming a um, channel member, hitting the join button below on YouTube, or going to the description and becoming a Patreon supporter. Five bucks a month or more on either platform gets you access to my Discord server, which is pretty fun. A lot of cool information there, a little sneak peek of things to come and all that stuff. So that's a really cool thing. If you can't support the channel financially, that's totally fine. I get that. I just appreciate you watching. Um, and I, I'm doing this to kind of educate people about this. Maybe you learned something, maybe you didn't, maybe you just like looking at helmets like I do. But uh, yeah, so thank you so much for watching in general and supporting the channel, all my patrons and stuff. And we'll see you on the next episode of the Vietnam War.